right, guys, we've been making a lot of progress here. Uh, we've got uh, the entire K member installed. We've got the struts installed, okay? All the brake lines hooked up. Uh, the steering shaft is all hooked up and I've got it aligned pretty good with the uh, center of the uh, steering wheel and kind of tried to do a, like a little semi alignment on the um, uh, on the wheels just to kind of get it close, you know, to where it will be, you know, where I need it for, you know, alignment purposes. Um, I installed the bump steer kit, got it pretty close to uh, level with the, that's kind of where you want that. You want it level with your A-arm uh, so that when your suspension travels, you don't get as much bump steer. You still do, but not as much. So you kind of, you don't want that, you know, when the wheels come up, you don't want your wheels pointing outwards. You've probably seen that on the, um, you know, pictures or videos or whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, I got, the, uh, like I said, got all the brake lines hooked up. Everything's good to go. Um, caster camera plates are in and uh yeah so in this video i just kind of wanted to show you guys how to install the travel limiter kit from team z okay the travel limiter kit is this here it's like it's pretty good price it's only like 60 bucks or something like that uh, and you get pretty much everything you need um these uh flanges here they're you know they look like they're cut on a plasma cutter or whatever, um, you get the uh, tabs for welding onto the uh, chassis. Okay, so pretty much, if, if y'all aren't familiar with, with what travel limiters do, I'll kind of explain it, but most people know. Uh, so it's basically, you can uh, limit the travel of your front suspension, okay? So if you're having problems with the car transferring too much weight um, or you know rising too much and then you start having wheelie problems um, you can tie the front end down a little bit um, and you can do it in, on, on this kit it's uh it's a nice kit you, you can do it in increments um, well you can see the increments there you can do it in and also you can there's three different holes on this plate so you know you could move it say you say you're here you could move it to here that'll give you like an eighth of an inch of adjustment then you can move it to here that'll give you like another eighth of an inch of adjustment and then you can switch holes and go to that hole another eighth inch so you can kind of see how they designed it you can get very small amounts of uh, adjustment out of it and then um you know it's just a basically a chain uh pins that you you use to uh adjust it so Basically what you want to do is you have your suspension here like this at full, um, it's pretty much at full extension, okay, just sitting like this. So in that case, you'd want to mount your, your tabs, okay, mounts right here to the frame rail. And on if you don't have Team Z A arms that have the uh, sway bar mount, <clears throat> which I do, um, you're gonna have to weld something onto your a arms, you know, if you got like a Q QA1 K member or something without uh, Without that you'd have to weld something on there, but in, in this case <clears throat> I'm just gonna use the hole that the uh, sway bar would use So it comes with this bolt, you know that goes <clears throat> that you would put into a tab or whatever You know like if you welded a tab here, you would just bolt it to that but in this case, I'm gonna use this bolt here. So it's gonna go in there and you pretty much, I'm trying to do this with one hand here, you pretty much weld it right to the frame rail, right there. <clears throat> and you wanna put it right, basically in line with, um, you wanna keep it in line with this hole here, okay? So you're gonna kind of be in line with the K member in this spot. So I'm gonna be pretty close to this brake line, but I think I can, kind of get around it to uh, weld and it should clear you know that pin so you can kind of see there's there's quite a bit of space there um, I'll put the pin from the other side but that's pretty much how you do it um, and when you you know you you want to make sure that you're at full extension and this to be at full extension so that you know that if you wanted to you could adjust it so you have full extension and then go from there as far as uh, tightening it up. So what we're gonna do first is I'll just kind of like come in here with a, 
a uh, little grinder will grind away the uh, the metal there, um, the paint to get to bare metal and kind of clean this up, clean it with acetone and we'll go ahead and tack it in and um, yeah, then go from there. I forgot to mention uh, which is a good idea is to actually compress your suspension like about an eighth of an inch okay and and then weld in your uh, travel limiters what that does is it keeps the um, shock okay so when you jack your car up or you do a wheelie or whatever it keeps the shock from bottoming out okay so you're actually using the travel limiters to stop the shock from bottoming out um, so I just put a little jack underneath and um, like literally jacked it up like an eighth of an inch. So I know that it'll, the travel limiter will catch it before the shock fully extends. Okay, so we got it. We got that. Um, I got my uh, ground hooked up here and carefully bolted this together so that it's aligned perfect. Okay, and then you're basically just going to stretch it all the way till it's fully extended. Hold it up there and tack it right there that's basically all you're gonna do so now you have you know that you're fully extended you're on the last hole you're on the last hole here um, that's bolted in down there and um, you tack it in so now you know when you uh, like I said you know when you jack up the car or when you're doing a wheelie um, it's gonna catch the travel limiter first which is what you want so let's tack this in and um, move on from there Uh, that stuff was pretty thick. Uh, it took took quite a while for it to uh, to uh, melt the uh, metal there. So I'm gonna have to turn it up a little bit and um, <clears throat> tack the rest in. But yeah, that's that's pretty thick. I have it at 80 amps, so I think I'll have to move it up to like 90. Okay, that was quite a bit faster. Um, it only took about, so I moved up to like 92 amps um, and that took around about three seconds to uh, start creating a puddle. So that worked pretty good. Um, the uh, brake line is gonna be kind of in the way. So I'm gonna probably unhook it here and move it a little bit so I can get my torch back here. Otherwise I'll be uh, kind of uh, trying to go around the brake line and it's just not good, so. Got that tacked in. Um, as you can see, it's kind of like, what I did was, <clears throat> it's kind of at an angle. What you wanna do is kind of point it. You wanna point it right at where your, um, your pickup point is. So, if, you know, your pickup point is here. So you wanna kind of create a straight line. So if that means this has to be angled a little bit, that's fine. You just don't want it like this and then when the when it extends it's pulling like this you want it pulling straight on that okay so that you know it'll you don't want the the bracket to bend you want it be you want it to pull on its str its strength not its weakness you know what i mean kind of um so yeah we got that side tacked in and like i said i need to move this little brake line here so i can get back there and tack that but yeah that's pretty much it pretty easy so let's tack the rest of it in and I'll uh, move to the other side and um, yeah move on
Okay, so we got it welded in. Um, I just kind of put a bead here and a bead here because uh, the frame rail actually has some like holes in it. Um, I don't know why, but there's a couple, there's a hole there and there's a hole there. Maybe there was something attached there before. I don't remember, but I just kind of went around them. Uh, it doesn't need to be fully welded. So that should be plenty strong, but yeah, it came out really good. All right guys, so we got both sides done here. Um, and you can see once I leave the, uh, take the tension off of the jack, um, this just should tighten up. Just like that, see? Tight. So now we know that we are on the chain and not the bottom of the shock. So anyway, um, I did okay with this. Uh, what you can tell here, okay, is you see how far this, this heat zone comes out here? Um, I, that means I got it too hot. Um, I, it was really kind of tough because the frame rail is really thick and I, it, I just had to heat it up for so long in order to get it to uh, start to flow nice and uh, but not that big of a deal because it's just tabs for um, you know for this bracket here so you know it's not like it's gonna distort or anything but um, you know if you're welding something and you're getting that much heat zone like that's like an inch maybe a little more than an inch away from your weld of the, uh, I guess they call that like the affected heat zone. Um, that's too much. But, you know, I'm learning every day with this welder and um, I've never professed to be a great welder, but I'm learning all the time. So uh, yeah, what I probably should have done was cranked up the heat even more um, so that it went quicker. But I didn't and I started going and I'm like, okay, it's starting to flow, but you know, I know this is taking too long, and then when I was done, I looked at it, and I'm like, wow, that that put a lot of heat into it. But anyway, we got it done, and um, this side here is not as bad. You can see that the heat zone is a little bit tighter in. Um, that one looks like maybe about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch, or right about an inch. But, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, and you can see that this slides in and out like this nice and easy um, since I put that spacer in there it kept it from being too tight so now at the track we can easily make adjustments you know up and down so yeah that's pretty much it guys pretty much it for this video just wanted to show you that and um, how much progress we're making uh, yeah I mean it's really coming along um, the only other thing I did yesterday was uh, went ahead and, uh, mounted the shifter uh, kind of <clears throat> use this little uh, uh, brace here that goes across the transmission tunnel to uh, mount the shifter. I used to have the shifter mounted on like a box uh, in the other car to kind of raise it up a little bit, but since this seat is lower, I don't need to do that. I can go ahead and get rid of that box and just mount it right to the floor. And I actually put um, behind here, I added a uh, brace, okay? So there's like a, um, maybe an eighth or three sixteenths uh, bar that goes across there that I welded in. And um, so the shifter is mount, has two spots to mount to. It should be really, really strong. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it's in a nice spot to where, you know, when you're driving, you can easily just reach over and boom, right there. The shifter is right there, so. In the other car, I kind of, the shifter was a little bit far back for me. I didn't really like it. So this, I moved forward. Okay, so, and um, we got the uh, shifter cable here that will probably run a hole through, I don't know, somewhere here, or maybe up in here, and then add a grommet. 
and then that shifter cable will wrap or wrap back around and then into the transmission here so it kind of does a loop around the back of the transmission so anyway anyway guys just wanted to show you the update show you progress show you the travel limiter kit um got the bump steer kit installed uh, if you're doing bump steer you know you can kind of guess on uh where it's supposed to be um it really isn't there's i don't know there's that much of a science to it you just kind of get it uh level with the a-arms that's pretty much what you want so if your a-arms are here you want this to be at the same angle is kind of the idea so anyway that's gonna do it guys hope you enjoy these videos and thanks for following along and i'll uh, check y'all next time